With the popular team-based first-person shooter Overwatch starting its second year, we're really excited to see what's next. Blizzard, the masterminds behind the game, have managed to hide a lot of secrets everywhere. You'll never believe which three Overwatch heroes were actually going to be one. Keep watching till the end of the video to find out. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video to level up. Number 1. Genji Split in Two Everybody's favorite robotic ninja and his archer brother were not always going to be in Overwatch. In fact, originally, Genji was going to be the only Shimada and he used a blade, ninja stars, and a bow and arrow. While in early development, Blizzard's playtesters felt that Genji was much too powerful and a little too complicated to use. Instead of the quick-footed, offensive hero we eventually got, Genji was more based on stealth, using slow movement to get into position to make a more precise attack. It wasn't a very fun way to play, and the stealth style of gameplay was shelved and eventually used for Sombra. It didn't take long for them to take the bow from Genji and give it to a new character, Hanzo. Giving up the bow wasn't the only change adding Hanzo to the game made either. With Hanzo came a fully new developed story that connected them as rival brothers with a storied history. As the story goes, Hanzo almost killed Genji for not playing an active role in their father's empire. While Hanzo believed Genji to be dead, Genji was actually saved by the original Overwatch team who also gave him his robotic body. Hopefully Blizzard tells more of this story in the future of the game. Number 2. Ultimate Changes while development of Overwatch continued, there were many things to balance. One of the factors of the game that was often changed was the ultimate moves used by different heroes. While almost every hero has had their ultimate changed in one way or another, the two we have the most details on are the rollerblading healer Lucio and the robotic turret Bastion. When Lucio would use his ultimate move, he would cause time to slow down. Not just for the enemy team either. Everyone on the map, no matter where they were, would get slowed down. Lucio would be the only one to still move at full speed. The only real benefit of this move is is that Lucio could do some heavy damage, but as a support character, that isn't his strong suit. Also, slowing down your team would be frustrating and not very helpful. It makes sense that it was cut. Bastion apparently had many different ultimate moves, with the most prototyping out of any character. The ability that was closest to making it into the final game had Bastion summon a small deployable mine that could not be destroyed. It would burrow itself in the ground as a trap and when triggered would shoot anyone in the area. Turns out this was a frustrating move and ultimately cut. Hey guys, we're very excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from the richest, Screen Rant, the Taco, the Sportster, the Things, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. Check out the Premium by clicking this link. Sign up for free and start binge-watching videos from your favorite channels. Number 3. Blizzard Game Easter Eggs there are many references to pop culture in general throughout Overwatch. One of the most consistent references found are mentions to other Blizzard games. Even in the original cinematic for the game, you can see a security guard playing Blizzard's trading card game Hearthstone instead of paying attention. The tablet the guard is playing on can be found, with Hearthstone running, in the spawn area for Temple of Anubis. There are several Diablo references in different maps of the game as well. In the restaurant on Route 66, there's a signed check on the wall from Deckard Kane, a well-known NPC from the Diablo series. There are also Diablo-shaped throughout the Dorado map. Finally, we have Murlocs, a basic enemy from World of Warcraft who can be seen in several levels. Mainly, we have one acting as a mascot for a ramen restaurant on the Hanamura map. If you shoot it, it'll make the signature Murloc gurgle sound. You can even find Murloc graffiti located outside the window of Temple of Anubis. We know that there are a lot of Blizzard references throughout Overwatch, so if you know one we missed, feel free to let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Horizon Lunar Colony the newest map added to Overwatch has a lot more going on than simply being a sweet moon base. Hidden on this base are hints about the ape uprising that occurred, which forced Winston to launch himself off the moon and to eventually join the Overwatch team. In case you've forgotten, the original story trailer for Winston showed him as an adorable baby gorilla being raised by a scientist on the moon. From just this trailer, we really can't parse much, but after exploring the Horizon Lunar Colony, we start to get more hints about what really happened. You can interact with a telescope on the base, which has a screen pop up showing that it was last looking at Watchpoint Gibraltar, a major Overwatch base. On the moon base, you can also come across some monitors that show many more apes that weren't mentioned or shown at any time. Winston has an in-game voice line that implies the apes are still on the base somewhere. Finally, we have a room filled with spacesuits, implying that there were, at a time, many more scientists on the base. It's hard to say what exactly happened to them, but knowing the writers at Blizzard, it's likely more complicated than they went on vacation. 
Number 5. Other Game Influences when creating a brand new world, it makes sense to pull influence through things that you already know. The best example of this is the turret-building dwarf Torbjorn. Overwatch lead artists Bill Petrus and Arnold Tsang have explained that they used visual language from the World of Warcraft franchise to act as a bridge between Blizzard's old games and their new one. Getting to work with a character that was already familiar to them design-wise made it easier to nail down the aesthetic for other characters. They also became much more comfortable with the sci-fi setting and were able to take even bigger leaps in different directions. Another character with an interesting influence was McCree, the gunslinging cowboy with a robotic arm. The look of McCree was inspired by Clint Eastwood in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. His gun was actually inspired by another video game. Do you know which one? Blizzard's lead designer on Overwatch said that the revolver from Valve's Half-Life 1 and 2 was a major influence. They loved the way that gun felt and wanted to emulate the same kick in their game. We'd say they succeeded, as McCree is one of our favorite characters. Number 6. There Will Not Be a Sequel one of the biggest surprises about Overwatch is that they're not planning on releasing an Overwatch 2. Well, at least not anytime soon. Blizzard has outright said gamers should not expect a sequel in the near future and that they're putting all their effort into what they have now. This is actually quite a breath of fresh air, as it feels like most modern video game developers and publishers are working hard and as quickly to crank out as many sequels as possible. In just 10 years, Ubisoft has managed to release 19 Assassin's Creed games and one movie. While it's nice to have new things to play, we would personally prefer to be able to play one game for a much longer period of time. Blizzard's refusal to charge for new characters, maps, or game modes is also refreshing. Games like Call of Duty will make you pay upwards of $100 for the full experience. And if in those games you don't buy the maps, it may ruin your multiplayer experience. It's clear that Blizzard is dedicated to the fans of Overwatch, and we're looking forward to see how the game will look in another year. Number 7. New Characters Speaking of Blizzard continuing to support Overwatch for years, let's talk new characters. Very recently, Blizzard added Doomfist to the game. The leader of the evil organization Talon, who uses a hand cannon and a massive robotic fist to take out anyone in his way. There's been many mentions of Doomfist, and even in the original trailer they alluded to his powerful glove. Now with him out, people were worried that there would be no other characters left to add. Never you worry, because shortly after Doomfist's release, Blizzard was already teasing several more heroes. While looking at older concept art, we can see all of the heroes we already know, but they seem to be battling a large half-woman, half-spider tank. Any questions asked the Blizzard employees about her have been swiftly dodged or dismissed, which usually means that there's something there. Overwatch fans also believe that the support AI Athena could become a character. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Athena, she's actually been in the game all along as the announcer. In the story of Overwatch, she plays a bigger role as she assists Winston in recalling the Overwatch team. There's also been evidence and changes to the Watchpoint Gibraltar map that she may have been moved to a real body. No matter what, we're excited to see who's next. Number 8. A Deeper Story We've already mentioned several times throughout this video that there's a deep, untold lore to Overwatch. The true story is told in bits and pieces through story trailers released by Blizzard, but there's even more under the surface. Overwatch was a team formed by the United Nations 30 years in the future. They were formed to end the Omnic Crisis, in which robots turned evil and were rising up over the humans. Peace was restored and robots were able to live among humans. However, in this time, Overwatch was falling apart and was disbanded. With Overwatch gone, the evil group Talon began to carry out various terror attacks centered around robotic leaders. This caused even more tension and brought an end to a long period of peace. Winston put the call in to reform Overwatch, which saw old and new members coming together to protect the world once again. This is only the start of the story, as every individual character in the game has their very own deep backstory that goes completely untold unless you go looking for it. Are you curious about any specific Overwatch hero's story? Let us know in the comments below. We want to know! Number 9. Real Life Dance Moves a very welcome recent addition to Overwatch are the new dance emotes that have been given to every character. We love watching the actual voice actors from the game reenacting their game counterparts' moves. What's even more interesting is seeing that all these dances come from pop culture. We have Winston doing the twist, a move most people likely recognize from Pulp Fiction. There's Mei reenacting dance moves from the 2006 anime The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Zarya is practicing her moves from a well-known aerobic video that's been seen in many viral videos. One of our favorites is the explosive Junkrat doing 
a fresh Prince S. Carlton. It even seems that Blizzard took dance ideas from their fans. Cosplayer Pocket Jen had a video posted of her doing the shuffle dressed as Sombra, and a few months later, the actual Sombra is doing the same dance. Coincidence? We think not. Finally, we have Hanzo doing moves based on the Soran Bushi, which is a dance from a traditional Japanese work song. The in-game emote is called Fisherman Dance, which further proves the influence as Soran Bushi originated as a sea shanty sung by men at sea. Number 10. The Ranger at the beginning of this video, we talked about how Genji was originally a mix of himself, Hanzo, and Sombra. He isn't the only character that started off as a heavy mix of characters. Early on in the game, there was an offensive-based hero that went only by the name The Ranger. The Ranger was a mix of Soldier 76, Bastion, and Widowmaker, and would have been quite a powerhouse hero. According to Jeff Kaplan, the Ranger would use a standard machine gun that would be easy for most FPS fans to use. This idea for the character was obviously split off and used for Soldier 76. The Ranger would be able to use a grappling hook to get to higher ground too. This seemed too good for an offensive hero, so it was given to the sniper Widowmaker, who could use it to get to better vantage points. Finally, the ranger would be able to use a mobile turret, which he could place on the ground at any time. As you may have guessed, this was actually the start of the idea behind Bastion, whose main ability is becoming a turret anywhere on the map. What do you think the ranger would have been like if they had kept him? Would he have been too strong? Let us know in the comments below. So, did you know all these Overwatch secrets? Were there any really big ones that we missed? Please let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to The Gamer so you never miss a video. And if you still want more, be sure to check out our playlist for more great videos. Thanks for watching.